Hello and welcome to the Payday 2 Starter Guide. For more information on the Starter Guide, check out the first episode linked in the video description. A while back we talked about playing your first couple heists, but I only really talked about loud in very general terms. In this episode we'll be taking a bit more of an in-depth look at some of the more common heists for low to medium level players, and we're doing this back on the alternate account. It feels good to be back. Okay, actually, Bank Heist is probably the most iconic mission in Payday 2. I'd call it the most played, but by now Rats has probably taken the lead and maybe Hoxton Breakout. If you're looking to commandeer the camera room for some recon, a free convert, or what will likely be a botched attempt at stealth, drilling the door is not your best option. A keycard will spawn in this mission more often than not. If it's not on the manager's desk, it's actually with the manager. He's a balding guy in a cheap, kind of plasticky looking vest. Tie him down or take him out if you're a monster! and then you can get into the security room no problem. Also worth noting that the teller's room is a great place to store hostages unless both doors are open. Enemies generally won't wander in there too much if there's only one way out. If you're looking to speed up getting into the vault, under pre-planning you can pick up the keychain for a couple favors and some pocket money in case there's a gate in the way that you'd also need to drill. This will speed up the game considerably. After about five minutes or so, you might hear Bane call for a chopper arriving. You're probably gonna want to head to the roof. Enemies will be dropped off by the chopper and head towards the air conditioner units where they will be pumping tear gas through the vents which can block off the back room, copier room, or half of the offices closer to the copier room. If you take these enemies out before they can finish this animation, you will not have any tear gas to deal with during the mission. That said, tear gas does make a good place to store hostages, kind of sadistically enough. They won't take damage from it, but the cops will be less inclined to walk through this area. The last major thing to note here are boards scattered around the roof and along the sides of the buildings. You can use these to cover up broken windows to prevent enemies from jumping through or sentry trucks on higher difficulties from targeting you and your crew. Just be careful with them, as boards can break and explosives will destroy them rather quickly. You cannot repair any broken boards and you can't remove them and place new ones. Once they're broken, they're broken. One last final note is that if you play Bank Heist Deposit, the escape becomes available once you've secured at least $25,000 in loot after the thermal drill is done drilling. The easiest way to get this money is to saw open an ATM and take its contents. There isn't too much to say about four stores, honestly. Secure $15,000 in loot and the easiest way to do that is, again, hack open an ATM. On higher difficulties, there usually won't be an ATM, so you need to drill open the safes in the back rooms of the stores. And unfortunately, on higher difficulties, these will likely all be Titan safes, so you can't really lockpick or blow these up, you must drill these. Drill skills are your best friend on this mission on higher difficulties. Four stores isn't a very big map, but it can be pretty open, especially for very low level players. In that case, you might want to consider pairing off. So you'd hit the shops in pairs. You would hit the china store and the cafe and then head across the street and hit the pair store and the convenience store. A normal mall crasher has three bags of loot. Wondering where to drop it off? Well, you carry it with you. Any bags in your person are typically counted towards your loot at the end of a mission. And on hard and above, there is a fourth bag in one of the safes. And not much more. With Mall Crasher, what I like to do is purchase a gas can. Pick it up when you head through the back room. Head upstairs, weave through the windows, breaking them with a quick melee like the switchblade or the kunai or the weapon butt. You burn down the gym, smash and grab the jewelry store, and once both the car shop and pair store are empty, toss a frag grenade dynamite any explosive throwable about halfway between the car and the counter. This will not only destroy the car, but it will also damage the headphones on the other side of the wall. Past that, you can break the roof, and that should yield enough destruction to warrant heading home. This mission can be done very quickly, and it's a lot of fun. It's actually my most played mission, even still. Playing Jewelry Store, Diamond Store, Nightclub, and Bank Heist Loud can be a bit of a problem due to escapes. There is a roughly 25% chance of an escape, and that increases by about 5% with each civilian killed. If you're worried about the prospect of having to reclaim all your lost loot in a second surprise day of this mission, you might want to invest in Sixth Sense Aced, which lets you hire the expert driver who prevents escapes altogether. Beyond that, there isn't not a lot to say with Jewelry Store other than that it's a great heist to play on normal, as with a couple ECMs you can complete it in under 30 seconds, which lets you continuously grind for loot drop cards if you haven't unlocked Continental Coins yet or you're just having a hard time earning them. You can only get one safe a week from the payday drop rotation, but if you need extra gun parts and don't have the money or offshore paydays, this can be one of your better options for a short while. Ukrainian Job is an alternate version of this mission where you reclaim one single piece of loot and the rest is optional. Don't listen to Bane in this mission, the tiara is always in the back room. Drill open both safes. It'll be in one of them. 
When playing Nightclub, your first priority should be securing key cards. If the club's manager Dimitri isn't in his office, he's the guy with the yellow striped tie, then he'll have a key card with him somewhere in the club. One of the mobsters will also have a key card, and there is a chance that a third one will spawn either in the coat room close to the DJ's booth, on the patio of the second floor of the club, or in the washroom near one of the stalls. At most, you'll have three doors to open, and best case scenario, you'll have three key cards. You're going to want drill skills on this mission to drill open the safes or any doors you don't have cards for, because without them, this mission can take quite a while to complete. As for any specific assets, there isn't much to discuss. The loot drop truck is awesome. Definitely pick that one up, but past that, like the slow burning gas cans can close off certain routes for a considerable amount of time, but they also pose a threat to you getting out of the club depending on where the escape van shows up. And the bad music plays Dave's Classics 92, uh, the ditty that plays Mall Crashers. You have fewer civilians to deal with, but a lot more guards. This is good for stealth, but not really for loud. One last thing, and this is more for stealth players, I'll be talking stealth later, is that the guards don't have pagers, and nobody bothers with a broken camera, so you can kind of just brute force this mission with enough cable ties. Also, fun fact I didn't know about until I wrote this video, you gain a little bit more experience from this mission if you complete it without using shape charges on the safes. It's not a lot more, but it's worth mentioning. Essentially, Jewelry Store's bigger, meaner brother, Diamond Store, has you pilfering jewelry not just from the sales floor, but also from safes in the offices upstairs and even a possible money bag in the shop next door. The key card in this heist is to disable the alarms in the cases, which if you're playing loud is not a problem. The alarm's already been activated, so don't worry about it. One thing to note though is that the security room can be accessed from outside, and as long as the door leading into the Diamond Store hasn't been opened, this is a great place to store hostages and loot bags just to make sure they don't get stolen. It's a little bit out of the way, but still, it's it's a little bit of cover. Again, Expert Driver might be worth the investment, so you don't risk losing all the gems you pilfered. Sixth Sense is a very good skill for this specific reason. If you play a lot of smaller missions, the escapes really only happen on smaller missions, the Expert Driver is a great asset. Most of the newer missions, most of the bigger missions, do not have escapes. I also thought this was worth mentioning, worth mentioning enough that I recorded this while I was editing the video, you can destroy the grates in the upstairs portion of the diamond store to throw bags straight into the car shop. If you're trying to move bags quickly, you can have just one or two people stay in the car shop because there's a decent cover behind the desk and throw bags to them through the grate and they can rush them out to the van. I don't know if that'd be more practical or not. It, it's an option. It's there for some reason. Huh, this map feels familiar. Uh, ooh, anyways, Go Bank is a bit of a strange case in that it is not in the console versions of the game, only Payday 2 on PC, and it features a lot of random elements. You typically need to drill the vault open, but very, very rarely the vault's already open. Once the drill's just about done, you need to assemble a cage. You'll fill it with loot for Alex the pilot to take, usually on the roof, but sometimes in the street. With the Ace Pilot asset, he'll be much more likely to take that cage, but without the Ace Pilot, it'll take longer and there is a rare chance that he'll be shot down and you'll have to secure all your loot by foot anyways. If you attempt to stealth the mission, there is a rare chance a blackmailer will demand a money bag tossed to him, otherwise he'll call the cops. It's kind of a wild mission. No matter what, in loud, be aware of your distant surroundings. Snipers love to set up all around the edges of the map and will attempt to shoot you down. If you're going on the roof, be quick and be careful, but most of all, protect your loot. Enemies can take it right out of the cage. And if you do need to move the loot through the sewer, toss it all down there first before anybody heads into the sewers. The moment one player steps down there, a point of no return timer starts up. Everybody has to be at the van before time expires, otherwise you fail the heist. Go bank can be quick and fun. It can also be long and unforgiving, but either way, yeah, that's a bank heist, all right. The armored transports are tough missions, and it's mostly because of a lack of cover. Play smart and possibly consider running an armor or regen build if you have more than one perk deck completed, and be sure to bring drill skills and maybe a saw as there's plenty of locks to drill that lead to many locks to pick. As with most other missions, the extra loot you secure is worth more than your cut for doing the bare minimum, but beyond that, I don't consider the transport missions all that worth it if your goal is a good payday. Firestarter, Rats, Framing Frame, they're the three most popular three-day missions. That means you're getting three different maps that tell a story. Firestarter is about crippling the resources of the Mendoza Cartel, and you start by taking their guns from their hangar. You can burn them nearby, but it's most worth it to hike them back up to the van, as this doubles the experience you gain from the first day if you steal every weapon, on top of each one being worth a small fortune. 
though you also need to empty the safe inside the building of the middle of the map to get that experience boost. On day two, you're mostly going for the server, but also investigate the evidence lockup on the first floor, as you can steal a ton of confiscated loot like cocaine and gold. And lastly, the third day takes place back at Harvest and Trusty, but before you drill that vault- no, wait, oh, you messed it up. Yeah, see, there's a power box on the roof of the bank that you need to cut the wires to before you can mount the drill. And once you're burning the money inside, I recommend opening up the safe deposit boxes. Again, like the regular bank heist, a saw speeds this up considerably. You can take nearly 10 more bags of loot on the third day this way, which in short makes Firestarter a horrendously profitable heist if you can put up with a longer running time. Rats is the meth job. You might have heard of many meth jobs, but this is the meth job. It's also surprisingly one of the more complex missions in Payday 2, even though I think it's perfect for a level 40 to 60 player. On day one, seven bags of meth can be made, sometimes six, but check for ingredients in this order. Check the pickup behind the house first, so you don't need to make a trek out there during an assault. Then the shed in the backyard, then the basement, then the shed by the front door, and then lastly the washroom. Once you've exhausted resources in one area, move on to the next one. Don't take from each of them individually. You want to clear out the spaces that are hardest to get out to and back in first because there's me a bunch of enemies surrounding the building later in the mission and that can just get worrying. When it comes time to actually cook, listen to Bane. When Bane says an ingredient, wait just a moment. An incorrect ingredient will get a line like this. Generally, if he says something like, wait up, hold a second, whatever, he was incorrect. The second ingredient he lists will always be correct. He will not have to correct himself again immediately after that. If he plays a brand new line, he might have to correct himself again if he says the wrong ingredient again, but it'll be the same ingredient until you put it into the batch. If he doesn't correct himself at all and instead says something like... Even if it ends with, these descriptions are iffy, or I think so, you can bet on him being correct. If you're still unsure or feel uneasy about it, then Bane will repeat himself again in about 15 or 30 seconds, or you can ask your teammates. Everyone will get up a bit of a different line, but the ingredient is the same for every player. Take your time with meth cooking, as one screw up will blow up the lab, which means little to no pay on day two. On day two, you hand over the meth you made to the Cobra Gangsters, you then follow them into the intel you need, as well as a possible bonus for extra math, and then steal it all back from them. Yeah, this stuff's expensive. There's no way we're giving it up for real. The gangsters hit like a bus, but don't have much health and a rather considerable headshot multiplier. Quickly take out the ones around the street and work as fast as possible to get your loot out of there. If you lack the prerequisite three bags of meth, attack them or steal your payment back before receiving your intel, You'll have to search the whole apartment for the intel, which requires waiting on drills and safes, which is just not fun. I don't think I need to tell you that it's not fun, it could, it's just, it's not fun. This could also just happen if the cops show up for an ambush or if the gangsters attempt to betray you. I recommend cooking four bags of meth, one more than you need, because if you are betrayed or the deal goes south either way, then you just need to find the apartment with the money bag ready to go. That apartment will also have your intel none of the other apartments. Yeah, they still prepare payment for you even though they intended to kill you. Also, I can't stress this enough, but steal bag your meth once you have the intel. That's where the bulk of this heist's payout comes from, even if you just cook three bags. Day three is pretty straightforward. Board the bus, smoke the Mendozas, and leave. There's another opportunity for money in this mission by opening the briefcase, though most of it will have C4 that you need to defuse. If the intel was burned in day two, you cannot defuse these bombs. Work fast, but not sloppy, open a briefcase, grab the money, toss it away from the bus, and then quickly defuse the C4. The bot skill quick helps here a lot, as that lets you complete the interaction much, much faster. Be careful though, as letting a single C4 detonate will blow up the entire bus, destroying any money bags nearby and sending you on the ground. Money bags can also be just thrown into the water, which, don't let that happen. Alex's chopper will be the first to arrive, but if you took more money bags than you have players, you're going to want to wait for Bile to arrive near the side of the bridge. Toss the cash into his chopper quickly before he's scared off by gunfire, but make sure not to toss any of the money into the water, and then once everything is secured, you can head home. Rats is a massive mission, one of the game's most popular and still one of the best developed, and it pays out extraordinarily well. 
Rats is definitely one of the most complex heists because even though there's more intense missions like Boiling Point and White House heist, Rats is definitely one of the more complex missions because even though there's more intense heists like Boiling Point or White House heist, they don't have things like trades with gangsters or careful meth cooking or worrying about your loot getting destroyed. And seeing as this heist alone took up like three paragraphs and took like triple the time of any of the other ones, I would consider beating this heist on Overkill a sign that you're ready to take your game to the next level. But not so fast. Next time on the Payday 2 Starter Guide, we're talking the basics of stealth and a few missions that you can train on to hone your ninja skills. Until then, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you around. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.